things that I was thinking about in being a respondent to Harvey was, of course, how you followed him, given his sense of fun, and a lot I could think of was, uh, was saying more things, if you love the talk, you'll, you'll even <laughs> love the book more. <laughs> and a lot of um, the thoughts that Harvey's talked about today um, do illustrate his amazing commitment to thinking about design in American sociology. And in fact, uh, having been to both the uh, Science Technology Studies Conference, uh, the US version of it, international version of it this summer, and then the European version of it, it was really, really interesting how hard it is in an American, especially in an American sociological context, to talk about design in relation to Europe. So thanks, Harvey, for being committed at the other side of the pond. So this session um, is a return to thinking about discipline. And I decided really what I wanted to do in engaging with Harvey's um, ideas was thinking about a form of minor interdisciplinarity. I'm, I'm not so um, keen on uh, sociology submitting, uh, and I'm not so keen on whispering, but maybe that's a history of kind of feminism. But I do think that minor interdisciplinarity uh, in the mode of uh, the moves that Mike was suggesting is really important. So here we go. When I first reflected on contamination in the context of disciplinary contamination, I kept thinking of the early work of anthropologist Mary Douglas, who carried out an extensive study of dirt in different cultural contexts. In the book, Purity and Danger, Douglas famously popularized the formulation that dirt was not dirt in every culture, but dirt was matter out of place. Now again, trying to channel Harvey, I thought that Harvey would have said, where's the dirt? <laughs> and so here we, uh, I've got some suggestions of where the dirt might be, but also where I don't think it is. So what, where is the danger, uh, dangerous dirt now for sociology, and what is the dangerous dirt for design? Should we, Harvey, be seeking um, more effects between these disciplines which feel like and act like dirt? You've suggested in a way that we should have this polluting move from design to sociology. But you've also talked about your commitment in a way of thinking about reactionary design. And in fact, I'm going to read out a segment of the email you sent me a few weeks ago where uh, you kind of protested, I think, and said, I didn't study advanced designers working on the avant-garde issues of digital products or techniques or imaginative branding strategy. Instead, I spent most of my time with folks working on tubs and toothbrushes and, of course, toilets. Simple stuff. And it's really important to remember that uh, Harvey's book suggests that designers don't interact with social science in this world. And the contrast, I think, that was drawn in that interaction in that email was that many of the designers with whom I've worked subscribe to email discussion of this like anthro design, where the hybrid is already active in a community. And that think of them, they think of themselves as relatively advanced in terms of social science. For these designers working on high-tech products and services, the kind of research approach based on user experience, for example, is not matter out of place in the work of designing, but is rather part of their day-to-day -day practice. And this is what was signaled in the initial conference rubric that we drew up, that pointed out that design drew on social science as a resource. And obviously, in Harvey's formulation, sociology is now prodded to accept design as a resource, encouraging us to think and do like designers. So I do want to consider how um, design might provoke new ways of doing sociology, but I also want to think about what moves are underway in sociology right now that uh, have reformulated sociology, so it becomes maybe uh, one way to be put what it become is design ready. So British sociology in particular has had a refocusing uh, of concerns with methods and methodology, so they begin to stress open-endedness, ongoingness, and the contingency of the social world. And I want to stick, again, to a kind of an accountability and commitment to sociology, as Harvey did um, in uh, this talk. So I want to kind of use the sociological um, authors who've been trying to think about uh, reformulating um, methods um, in terms of open-endedness. Recent authors such as Patricia Clough and John Law now propose sociological approaches that look at modes of enactment and bringing forthness rather than ways of working which stress description, analysis, and representation of something happening out there in the world. These approaches require new vocabularies, again, I'm talking about what's emerged from British sociology, of invention, sensation, and mess with novel devices and assemblages. Clough suggests we should be working with an empiricism of sensation at the very limit of the phenomenal, very different from a more traditional approach where empiricism demanded distant, detached views from above. Although I have to say, uh, listening to uh, Lucy's comment, I think I still do 
guiltily think of myself as collecting data quite a lot of the time. Um, in this spirit, my colleague Ocelia Lurie and I are editing a volume that seeks to take up the idea of devices for invest the investigation of the social. We think of devices, such as things like list, pattern, anecdote, as existing somewhere between a thing and an action, an object and a method, and a means by which the social world is not only investigated, but also engaged. But we are not characterising devices as contaminating, but rather as engaging problems within disciplines. So, in sociological circles which accept these devices, the introduction of doing and thinking like a designer probably won't provoke any feelings of dangerous dirt at all. Yet, Harvey reminds us of the very different presentational worlds of the sociologists and designers. In the notes he sent me, it said, quite starkly, designers pitch, sociologists submit. <laughs> A formulation <laughs> which alerts us to the economic framing of each activity, as well as their temporal politics. The temporal necessities of these activities, alongside their expectations of the labour process that gets you to pitch or submit, lead designer and sociologist in different directions. The pitch is about liveness, atmosphere and momentum, amongst all the other things that um, Harvey's talked about, to drive the presentation through to the next project. The sociological submission does not have the same audience expectations, nor necessarily an idea of immediate nextness. In fact, once you've submitted something, there may be a sense of a void. <laughs> it may expect nothing to happen for a while and for the product to be materialized sometimes in the future. So another question back to Harvey. If we're being mobilized by the disciplines as different, what are the different temporalities at work in design and social science, and how do we work those together in your formulations? Um, another kind of question related to that, what is design speed and how could sociology um, encounter it? Now, I want to talk briefly about where I think some contamination uh, does work. Um, and uh, I want to refer back to a couple of examples from my own work in collaboration with high tech industry. Um, and then actually make a pitch uh, for studio sociology. So for me, there have been two kinds of uh, contamination that have occurred as I've worked in collaboration alongside um, uh, industry. And because we were talking about con contamination, I was thinking about how um, often uh, matter gets out of place when collaborations are forged between industry and academic work. So suddenly there becomes an, uh, an us and them, and it's not necessarily between design and social science, it's between people who are working um, in industry settings and those uh, who are in academic settings. So this might be a different kind of contamination that we might want to talk about. And here is uh, perhaps a uh, contamination, a site of contamination, which is an encounter between researchers inside Intel's uh, People's and Practices Research Lab um, about three, four years ago, uh, which Kat Jung, Nicole and I ran, um, uh, and uh, us as academic researchers bringing um, data from the um, 73 London bus route, uh, thinking about situations of um, ubiquitous mobility, uh, ubiquitous computer. And what I want to talk about, I guess, is the ways in which um, we might think through this contaminating, contaminatory practice as locuses of our accountability, what we're doing there, and this follows writing that um, Lucy Suchman and others have done, thinking about this located um, uh, responsibility. But I also want to talk about when and how and why we might want to talk about this as contamination between academic and industry research, and whether we actually want to engage or acknowledge our own um, affective registers in this research. So, for example, I was having a long chat with someone recently about how uh, the major affective register that's generated in these kind of industry collaborations is actually not necessarily excitement, but usually disappointment. Uh, and then I started reading the psychosocial theorist uh, Ian Craig, who points to the importance of disappointment. And I was like, yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I, I want to talk about that affective register, and I'll move that through to, to the um, studio sociology in a second. The other contaminatory practice that I think we've been involved in is really much more pushing different visual forms within industrial settings. So here's another installation of a different project, also involving a London bus, but actually about cyclists, that um, Britt Hazius and I installed um, in Intel offices in um, Portland, uh, Oregon, um, a couple of years ago. And here is um, a shot of an installational element 
where in which two uh, life-size bus posters, or posters of, um, that were printed lifestyle of bu size of buses, were placed in at exactly the distance that the minimum distance that a cycle bike messenger would go through, in order to um, pass through buses in London. And one of the interesting effects, of course, in introducing this kind of um, space contamination is that most people spent a lot of time walking around all the cubes that they could possibly do rather than going through this tiny aperture between these um, pieces of paper, which was that big, so it wasn't that small. So this is another contamination actually inside um, the corporation and possibly we could talk about different modes of uh, contamination which might be better talked about as intervention. But what I want to do really is um, make a pitch now, I guess, for a, a minor <laughs> uh, interdisciplinary moment and thinking through the sociology of the studio. And I've probably got about four minutes left on that. Um, I want to talk about studio sociology as a rediscovery of materials and the place of their transformation and failure, rather than just the analysis of data. We can think of it as being creative with data, some a point that was made earlier, data as starting point of creative process, but I'd actually rather use the term material, as a sculptor might use the word, um, in terms of, say, material properties and how we use the material properties, say, of an interview, the sound, the rhythm, the repetition, rather than analysing and coding content. So this also could be thought, to return to Harvey's um, uh, thoughts uh, as aestheticized sociology, but I also would say that studio sociology is a place to generate and disperse affects, this empiricism of sensation that Patricia Clough talks about, particularly for those, uh, particularly those um, affects which are absorbed and coped with in the studio, anticipation and speculation, I think, in design, and uh, this kind of refers back to the value and the, our um, uh, indebtedness to our complicities in aspirational politics. So the studio becomes, might become a place for sociology to try and think what happens next through models, prototypes, and the development of new visual vocabularies. And one of these aspects has to be disappointment, which if you read artists' accounts and designers' accounts of um, material working in the studio is a common theme. Things that don't work, things that are seen as failures, aren't always eventually failures. Um, it's also perhaps, again, referring to Harvey, a better... A, place of working together better, and a constructive and reparative mode of sociology rather than a, a paranoid uh, critical mode, uh, to use Eve Sedgwick, where we carry on reproducing us and them, whatever the us and them is. So I want to show you now a two-minute documentation of a film that I made in the mode of, um, I was going to say in the mode of paranoid sociology, in the mode of studio sociology. <laughs> <laughs> But that's an interesting slip. And um, it's a documentation of a film loop. Uh, and it's two minutes long, and then I'll give 30 seconds of follow on it.
So the materials I was trying to work with in Inside Intel with Bolex was uh, both time and the 16 millimeter film technology to try and challenge some of the issues that I'd seen as going on as I collaborated in high tech industry with um, thinking that you had to use the latest new technology in order to get to the next thing. So the film was made partly in response to my experience of being or feeling like I was partly contaminated, but also wanting to enact a different sense of temporal politics, particularly thinking about the loop or looping temporality, shifting us back and forth between past, present, and future. So, you know, 16 millimeter in fine art circles is very retro at the moment. It's, it's uh, being used a lot to signal the disappearance of uh, technology and the film meter itself. Um, and I think it does, to a certain extent, when replaying in that kind of context, press the point of the home that we don't press home at the point that we don't need to use or with the new to see the next. But also, final point, I wanted to acknowledge the non-innocence of this exercise, going back to Harvey's idea of um, kind of pollution and almost the toxicity. I really thought here about the politics of materials, and particularly the politics of water. Chip manufacturing generates toxic waste as well, um, as does developing 16 millimeter film, a lot of it. So here I wanted to trace an idea of relationships for, soci for sociology, and I hope it will influence what happens next.